Well, where to begin? Um, in 2010, the government announced that they were going to raise uh, tuition fees. Uh, they didn't announce by how much, and that came in the 2011 budget. Uh, and at that point, we were already mobilized. We already went through a series of demonstrations of one-day strikes uh, leading up to what we see now, the, the unlimited general strike uh, of Quebec students. Um, we sent a final warning to the government by marching on uh, November uh, 10, 2011 uh, through the streets. We were about 15,000 and a few months later uh, we, this, we realized that we had exhausted every other mean to uh, force the government to uh, cancel that planned tuition hike and we went on an unlimited general strike which is uh, how Quebec students traditionally have fought these reforms to uh, their education system. So, the, the unlimited general strike uh, started in, I'd say, early February with uh, strike votes around the province, first uh, on very mobilized campuses, uh, in Université du Québec à Montréal, for instance, and then uh, slowly getting to uh, very many campuses, uh, and that all culminated in a huge protest on 22nd of March uh, that regrouped about 200,000 people, which makes it one of the biggest demonstrations in the history of Canada, even. Um, and then on, the government made a series of offers that uh, weren't deemed uh, enough uh, to, for, for students to end the strike, and as you perhaps know, strikes are voted on a local level, uh, at the union level, and they're very democratic, so uh, the students at every association decides decide whether to renew or not the strike, and so far they've chosen to renew it uh, up until now, and this makes it the longest unlimited general strike in the history of Quebec, 14 weeks, and the government still hasn't touched on the issue of tuition fees. Everybody is very clear on why they're on strike, you know, but <laughs> they, they reject completely the, uh, the tuition increase that that Shah is imposing on people. And uh, in, there's a complete rejection of that, so that's the basis of agreement of everyone who's going out and protesting and, and striking. But then added to that, there's a lot of other uh, a lot of other um, demands, uh, and one of them is the notion of free education and accessible and public education. And also looking at the privatization process of our universities from a very critical point of view, uh, that this privatization process doesn't serve the interests of the people, the interests of the communities uh, and of the citizens. So in that sense, it's, there's, a, there's a wide consensus. It started with a pretty big consensus. As I would say, first on the university uh, spaces, whether it be professors, whether it be students, or even support staff uh, at universities, there's a there's a general consensus that this hike can't uh, go through. And with that, people that's everybody I speak to in the protests is, agrees with that. Obviously, that's why they're there. But um, but what has changed and shifted is that. Since the government has been so belligerent and so unwilling to hear that that call, you know that the people are making, it, it, it's it's extended beyond that now. Because often not everybody is affected by by that tuition hike. Uh, like uh, Nadia was saying, um, it's certain people who are more affected than others, uh, like uh, like women. Uh, they earn seventy dollars, seventy cents to a dollar uh, compared to men, so they are more affected by a, a flat fee increase like that. Um, same thing with uh, racialized people, those people who are uh, so uh, like people of color. Um, uh, same thing with people who have like disability, for example, or, or, or obviously lower class people. Well, I think we have the chance in Quebec to have a lower tuition fees than elsewhere, and, and, and it's not a gift that our governments give us. We have the lower tuition fees because we fought in the past to keep them low. We fought in the past to have a public education system, to have an, an accessible education system. And, and what we are doing as a generation this year is only the continuity of what has been done in the past by our parents, by our great parents, to, to keep education accessible. I think we, we should be proud 
to to have uh, this 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 uh, this to have the education system that we have, and we should fight to keep it. We should not be ashamed and say, oh, if the other province or the other countries did the, did the mistake to to reduce accessibility to education, we should imitate them and do the same mistake. I think we should be proud to be a model, and we should incite the the other provinces and countries to learn from us instead of doing the same mistakes. Well, we need to see free education in the context of uh, when the public system of education was created. In 1968, the goal was to go towards free education. Uh, the only thing is at that moment, the government said that we're doing so many reforms, you know, there are so many things to do. So we'll start with the low, low fees and we'll not increase them, we'll freeze them forever and actually decrease them until we get to free education. Um, uh, it was uh, the, the, uh, the spirit of the rapport par an. Uh, but uh, you know, with with the, the government changing and and you know also the international situation changing, uh, more and more uh, right wing uh, position were taken and uh, we're a bit lost the model of education and society we want in Quebec, and uh, and so fees were they were in freeze and now we have this theory that oh we need to get back to the fees in uh, 1968, but we cannot as a student movement only react to each time there's an increase, you know? The only result of, of that will be that uh, we don't never achieve the goal. And the first goal was to have free education. So we keep in mind this, this really purpose of uh, the, the, you know, to put together this system of education we have now. And so we're putting back on the table. We did not forget, basically. Uh, and if we really believe that education is right, then we should demand free education, education that is available to all. This makes financial sense, this makes uh, political sense, it makes uh, social sense. And, uh, and this issue has mobilized uh, very many people. Uh, we have uh, very strong social institutions here in Quebec and uh, people want to protect them. Uh, education is, is, is one of those and historically the student movement has always reacted very strongly to attacks to education and has demanded in return free education. This demand that it isn't coming out of nowhere. It's, it's a historical demand of the student movement. It's been a historical demand since the 1960s and it's the 1970s when, uh, when the PQ promised free education. It's a theme that uh, comes back every few years and I think it's definitely what we should uh, yearn for, uh, for as a society and free education of course uh, is, is one of many demands that uh, touches upon uh, social services. They should all be free and accessible and uh, that represents uh, the very minimum of a social democratic uh, society uh, and eventually uh, of course we'd like to go uh, further but free education is a very good beginning. In Quebec with General Assemblies, students vote through General Assemblies um, historically and during the strike too to go on strike and it's viewed as being a collective decision not just an individual decision that those students who vote are on strike but that all the students go on strike and what's been different this time is that the government has hammered away and it's been picked up in the media that this is a boycott that it's only individual students who are deciding whether or not they go to class um, and that uh, everyone else if they're not actually on boycott then they should be allowed um, but then that's where the conflicts come from is that it's hammering away at this idea that's a collective decision um, and then they start calling it that it's a right to education that nobody should be blocked from going to class where the people who were the schools where there's been kind of um, blockades of, uh, of, of classes and of the schools are places where students have voted in majority to go on strike there's no schools right now where student associations have voted to not strike that people are setting up blockades and blocking them from going to school. It's only at the schools and in the associations where students have voted to go on strike that they've been forced by the government um, kind of attacking and trying to minimize this idea of a collective decision and the media kind of picking that back up. Um, and so before we, in 2005, there were hard pickets, but it wasn't to the same degree because it was still accepted. But this time around, they've decided to take another tactic of really trying to make it seem like it pitting students one against the other. The way we've been able to organize such a um, combative and well-organized movement in, uh, in Quebec is through like a very grassroots syndicalism. Right? It's like organizing regular assemblies at the departmental level or at the junior college level. 
um, and that takes a lot of organizational work and, you know, like, the current spike was at least two years in the making, if not decades, right, through the kind of organizational work that went into like, building up student unions that were autonomous and have regular assemblies and operate through direct, direct democracy and who federate in a directly democratic way with each other. Like, all that is a lot of groundwork, but, you know, it pays off. Um, so, I don't know, I feel like there's no magical solution, but um, we're organizing very much at the grassroots and um, uh, uh, and like with the people who are directly affected by certain policies or could be tuition increases, like it's a model that's worked here. So, uh, and it, it doesn't have to, you know, work in Quebec but not work in Ontario, for example. Like it, it can work anywhere. Bill 78 uh, not only effectively outlaws demonstrations by making it necessary to, uh, for an organizer to register the demonstration with the police uh, eight hours in advance, uh, it makes all demonstrations that aren't, that do not comply to this uh, new law um, illegal by default. So that means every single participant that has um, called for other people to join the demonstration uh, can be punished by law uh, to approximately $1,000 to $7,000 in, uh, in, in uh, amount fines. There you go. Uh, and this is even more dangerous for student organizers uh, in uh, unions, those who are elected. Uh, they face up fines up to $35,000 for, for calling on Twitter for people to join demonstrations that could be illegal. Uh, and for national organizations to do this, then uh, the fine can go up to $125,000. Uh, one, $125, and this is very dangerous. Uh, national organizations, student unions, do not have that much money. Uh, and it's, it's just incredibly ridiculous how, how this law first of all, circumvents the Constitution of Canada, which allows uh, for everyone to the right to demonstrate. Uh, and second of all, is, is a clear attempt at uh, outlawing all kind of political dissent in Quebec. And th this is a very dangerous precedent. It's touching the really right of demonstration association and free speech. Now we need to look at what we say. Uh, I was really um, afraid when I saw that when uh, in uh, the National Assembly uh, some MPs asked uh, Minister Cochin, the Minister of Education, the Liberals, uh, what happened if somebody were a red square, you know, and supporting the student movement? Is it uh, encouraging uh, illegal demonstrations? And their answer was not, no, no, that's okay to wear such a symbol. Was the police will judge. So now, is does that mean that having a red script can also be a criminal act? For in a strike, a strikes around Quebec uh, on local campuses, to enforce them, you have to form a picket line, and these picket lines are effectively outlawed from now on. Uh, even if you demand, if, even if you ask the police to uh, to, to police them, they're they're outlawed. Any demonstration in a perimeter of 50 meters around a school is outlawed and punishable by. Uh, these ridiculous fines and if a student union calls for these picket lines then uh, they lose their entire funding for a semester that's for calling for one day of picket lines if they call for three days of picket lines they lose three semesters funding uh, and that effectively means the end of campus politics of campus life in Quebec it's ridiculous uh, and what we've seen, the reaction we've seen from the Quebec population is one of anger. Um, everywhere, union leaders, uh, student union leaders have called for people to uh, to ignore the law, uh, called for civil disobedience, and the general population is 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 getting very angry. And this could lead to further uh, social movements and. Uh, 
further anger maybe leading up to a general strike of, of all society. It's, uh, it's the last chance of the government to, to stop our movement. Our, our movement. They tried uh, to, to divide us, they tried to scare us by police brutality. They tried uh, uh, to... They made offers in the media hoping that the students in the General Assemblies would accept them and stop the strike. And each time they... they well, and they also they, they, they encouraged the, the, the students who were against the strike to uh, deposit injunctions. Uh, in court to, to, to force the, 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 the teachers to give their courses and it was a, and all those all those tries were uh, were well failed so now this government is I think this is I think it's a this is pretty move from the government to, to, to kill our movement at the moment where uh, it is a stronger uh, but we already already saw uh, the result of such a law and uh, it's a uh, you know, more anger. It's not answering the political problem that society, and uh, it, people are going just to you know after one of the days of strike and all the population been supporting and so many demonstration just say oh, okay now you want to crush us with police we'll stop no 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 it's just making more anger and people are going to fight it. Um, I'm I'm just hoping that uh, some liberals will wake up of uh, what they are going to do. It's it's actually. It's very terrible. It's go putting the seeds of fascism. But it's clear that it's, it's a very authoritarian law. It's an anti-democratic law. I mean, it's everyone who who reads it. And I mean, we've seen uh, thousands of lawyers in the last days writing letters, petitions, uh, s sending us emails to say that it's clearly un unconstitutional. It's it's uh, it's breaking the the freedom of speech, the freedom of association, the freedom of, uh, to protest. So uh, it's it's clearly a uh, and I mean, it's, for me, it's an evidence that it will be uh, invalidated in front of, a, of, of the Supreme Court. The problem is that it, it will be very long and until it's, it's, con it's, uh, it's cancelled by the courts, we will probably have to, to pay the fine or related to the law. But I guess, yeah, it just kind of sucks that in, in the meanwhile, like, a lot of people are going to be fined or uh, going to do a bit of jail time or are going to have to live under that fear of, of either one of those things. Um, but yeah, like a lot of people that I've talked to are confident that this can't last, like the, the current um, situation can't last, even if it's like after elections or something like that. Um, like this kind of law uh, was introduced at like the height of massive mobilization with unprecedented popular support, right? Um, and as it, um, you know, as the abuses that this law can, um, can introduce, like, uh, you keep making headlines, then, you know, those in power will have to change their strategy yet again. Um, and, you know, once they've exhausted the repressive option, like, what do they have left? <laughs> at the numbers of how many people were injured in the past three weeks and it's really shocking how many people got uh, arrested you know over a thousand five hundred students were arrested uh, and their supporters in the past three weeks uh, and that is, that is an amazing number if you look at the big picture how many do you have two students that lost their eyes you have one uh, uh, student uh, that needs a complete reconstruction, re reconstructive surgery of her fr front of the face. You know, her teeth are gone, her jaw because of rubber bullets and plastic bullets. And uh, when the government and you know the mainstream media talks about violence, well, what is the violence? You know, it's like let's let's talk about how many cops were injured and what kind of inju injuries they sustained, really, because it is. There are probably injuries, but what is the severity of these injuries in face of 1,500 arrested people losing their eyes, which is priceless. I mean, somebody losing, this is a permanent disability, and uh, you don't see any real attempt of investigating these situations and finding who shot these kids in the face, you know, with a with rubber bullet that travels at, you know, 260 kilometers an hour. One of our journalists of CUTV got, uh, ca our cameraman was uh, arrested uh, earlier uh, in April. 
Uh, he was arrested because he was just trying to. Uh, there was a police intervention, uh, an economic disruption actually, first, uh, where uh, where students were. Uh, which one was it again? They were trying to. Hotel. To uh, yeah, to, there was a meeting of shareholders of uh, or no of members of the Conseil du Patronat, so the, the bosses association in Quebec, and uh, they tried to go in there and just block the entrances and kind of disrupt this uh, this uh, thing. And obviously, the police uh, intervened very very strongly with pepper spray, with beating by beating people up as well. And uh, and we feel that as media, this is something we need to show. You know, we need to show. Uh, the actions of the police and take pictures because often people don't believe it. You know that that, that that's what happens and that's what goes on at the, at these protests. And students were completely were engaging in, in civil disobedience. You know, in a non-violent civil disobedience and uh, collectively uh, taking this uh, this action. When you have this oppression that is happening and the use of uh, cops and now everybody's like SPVM, police politic, you know, it's like political police. That's what they're calling the police of Montreal at the moment. That is that is an, a major, major thing because when you lose, when people lose the, the, tr the respect for the law and they're no longer afraid of the law enforcement, uh, you cannot govern. I mean, tonight will probably be something like the 25th or 26th in a row. So they've been going on for about a month, every night at 8.30. And then sometimes there's like two night matches called um, in the same night. Uh, so like one starting at 8.30 and one starting at midnight. Um, and those have been happening obviously like every day in Montreal and then almost every day in Quebec City and some days in Sherbrooke, uh, which is kind of like a smaller town in Quebec. Uh, similar to like Kitchener Water, one of those like, smaller regional centers. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, they've been getting bigger and bigger, <laughs> uh, especially I find when there's like a significant event that happens the day of, um, so, you know, obviously there's the special law situation, um, you know, that's, that's kind of been pushing a lot of people to go to these demonstrations, um, yesterday was the first day when any demonstration above 50 people um, that hasn't, like, whose, like, details haven't been approved by the police is illegal, like, um, that was the first demonstration in that context yesterday, and people still came out in big numbers, and it was more intense than any of the other nighttime demos that have happened, like, people who were in, like, a stretch of bars on saint Denis, which is, like, a major street, uh, like, were pepper sprayed out of bars, like, rubber bullets were shot into bars, like, their fires, um, like people are starting to use Molotov cocktails. Like the intensity of these uh, these demonstrations is getting um, is getting bigger and bigger. Um, and I think it, they play a really uh, important role in the political balance right now. Like, Another thing that, uh, that we hear a lot on the street is that uh, la grève est étudiante, la lutte est populaire. Yeah. So the strike is the students, but the, the struggle is a popular one. Obviously our strike originally started on the specific issue of, of tuition increase. But uh, fast, after a few weeks of mobilization, a lot of students began to, to talk in their general assemblies that the, the issue of, of the tuition increase was part of a much broader uh, wave of neoliberal reforms, of austerity reforms, not only in Quebec but all over the world. So, uh, and we have seen more and more citizens coming into our protests. We have organized a lot of protests during the weekend for for the workers to, to come and protest with us. And, and it has worked. Uh, we have seen uh, the the the. Um, our movement beginning to include more and more people, workers, citizens, community groups, unions, uh, who come in the streets with us because they know that if that our strike is beginning to be a strike only to keep the, 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 the possibility for the social movements in the next years to continue to contest the, the, the decisions that are taken by the government. So we have seen this, our movement being larger and larger, including more and more people, which gave birth to this slogan that the, the strike is, is a student issue, but, but, the, the, but the fight is a popular fight. 
with Shara, I've been having a long-standing agenda that's going that direction. And it's not been only attacking, like I said, the education by increasing the fees or even further privatizing universities. Just a few years ago, we have even a change on the board of university to put more private companies on the boards to uh, make a minority of the student and the union's representative. It's the same thing happening with hospitals. Um, you know, further privatization, there is cuts in so many programs and like we said, we, we had to suffer through austerity budget uh, the last two years. Um, but I think the economic crisis is now uh, the a pretext for the government to go further in cuts and privatizations because in the same time the government is doing that, they are actually reducing the income tax of uh, private companies. They just got, uh, not very long ago, uh, the tax on uh, the capital. So. We, we see an agenda. So, like, that means healthcare, like, they've already introduced um, a $200 a year fee for accessing healthcare, which you pay on your like, tax return. Uh, like, they're driving those wedges in, um, in many places. Uh, I can see them going after the $7 a day daycare um, system that we have, which is, like, a pillar of um, the social model in Quebec. Um, uh, so, you know, that's that's an important issue too, is the fact that um, like this movement is kind of like, um, I guess maybe similar to like the situation in Greece, right? Uh, like they're at the forefront of like an anti-austerity struggle in Europe and the outcome of their struggle will have repercussions for a lot of other struggles, um, you know, across the continent that they're in. So the Quebec movement is in a similar situation, I think. I think citizens in Quebec whether they're students or not, uh, see this issue as something we need to uh, to defeat in order for broader social movements to uh, to rise from from this particular movement. Um, the government has refused to has ignored our demands specifically because it does not want a social movement to win. Um, and if we do win, this will allow for the broader society to make further demands that would go beyond a simple uh, tuition fee increase. Uh, and this is why we've seen civil society jumping at this issue and uh, joining students in the streets. There is a class struggle, and this is our struggle. The students, the workers, um, the community organizations, the peoples. And there is a minority that's actually taking the opportunity of the economic crisis to actually further attack our rights. Uh, like in Montreal, um, I don't know, I mean, you can kind of tell from being in a, in a demonstration, like, people are just like, you know, when their car is stopped by the demonstration, instead of honking at it in anger, they just like come out and cheer, right? Like, most people in bars cheering, most people just spontaneously join, like, taxi drivers cheering, honking, like, uh, a lot of people just support this movement because it, yeah, I don't know. Um, this is going to sound really corny, but like it gives them hope, <laughs> right? Like it's very meaningful in terms of mounting a real challenge to, um, like, to the current government and to its policies. Um, and even if it's just people who are scandalized by all the like corruption incidents that have happened uh, over the last few years. Plan Nord is one big thing that uh, that uh, where the Sharia government is just agreeing to anything and just agreeing to basically sell out the resources of Quebec without for to private companies and for a very cheap price and have the private companies basically mining companies and so on make all the money uh, and in that sense people are really upset because they realize what are you talking about when there's no money you know they just agreed on for example a big amphitheater in Quebec uh, to build that in cooperation with this public-private uh, partnerships that they're having and they're like what are you talking about there's no money you know there's, there's there is money and it's only a question of priorities so that's what I hear on the street a lot and um, and so it started with the, it started with the student movement, but it, it, the ball was started basically. You know, the dance was started with the students uh, on on their campuses. But it's just it's just been growing.
Well, I think the best, uh, the best, the best support we can have is, is for students uh, elsewhere in, in Canada and in North America and in the world to, to begin to begin to mobilize themselves also against uh, not only the, the tuition increase but neoliberalism in the whole. And we have seen it. Uh, we have seen uh, more, and we are receiving more and more emails, calls from students from all over Canada who who ask us for counsel in order to, to mobilize. I think in, the, in, in Quebec we have the chance to have a, a, a student movement very active, very solid, very mobilized and I think we are ready to help everyone who wants to uh, to open a, um, a fight in their province. Well, I think we already received a lot of support and we already always need more support. But the best way to change things here is because it's to see this struggle not as a Quebec struggle only but a much broader struggle it's not the only a question, oh, should the Quebecers pay more, like the student Quebecers. No, every student in this country are paying way too much. And every student in this country are in a bit the same context and have the right to have free education. This right is something that is shared actually by everybody on this planet. So this struggle needs to be understood in that context and also in the context of the economic crisis. So the best way is to spread uh, this struggle. Don't do, don't necessarily just do solidarity work with Quebec, right? Like, um, like put the fear of history back into the like your own political classes, right? Like they link up with the Liberal Party in Quebec. Like it's kind of like a broad liberal family that goes across Canada. Um, like uh, if there's pressure coming from a lot of other provinces for free or accessible education, um, like everywhere else, uh, they won't be able to say like, well, you know. It's just fine in other provinces. Like, you know, you guys have no have no ground to stand on, and we're going to raise tuition to be at the Canadian average, and that's it. That's all. Like, if they're not unable to say that without, um, like, even mainstream media pointing out that like there's a lot of student activism going on elsewhere, um, then that'll strengthen our case as well as yours, obviously. Discourse that you know Quebec students are spoiled. They already have the lowest tuition in Canada. Um, I think that's why Canada should take notice because. Um, because Quebec should be the standard for Canada, and once Quebec goes, <laughs> there's no more standard. Um, I mean, also, education is also a federal issue, um, and imagine other provinces actually um, had a strike movement um, and that it was coordinated. Um, there's, there's so many possibilities. Quebec students here have uh seen what's happening in Ontario, tuition hikes and all, uh, with increasing worry. Um, and I call for all Ontario students to react strongly and to organize, uh, organize unions, organize strikes in order to react to this movement. Uh, the, the Quebec example is not limited to Quebec. It can happen elsewhere and it will happen elsewhere. Solidarity with Quebec is only the first step towards a broader struggle, a Canadian struggle, and uh, a struggle for free education or for lower tuition in Ontario. Yeah.